Heather, in the last Q&A, number 62, you mentioned acupuncture and chiropractic rather seriously, whereas I, the person asking the question then got upvoted, uh, whereas I understand them to be pseudoscientific and generally quackery. Am I missing something? Uh, so, you know, I, I would love to spend a lot more time on this, actually, but um, let me say that um, the first time I, I just tried acupuncture for the first time a couple of months ago, and uh, chiropractic maybe six years ago or so, and in both cases, when they were suggested by people I respected, I had this response of, really? Like, given what I've described to you, you think that could help? Um, because I sort of had the same, the same sense. And I think, you know, like I said in the Q&A last week, uh, in every field, there are people who don't know what they're doing. And... Uh, in some some fields are more prone to having those who don't know what they're doing obscure that fact with a lot of woo-woo. And that can make it seem like the entire field is based on nothing. Uh, and I think chiropractic, for instance, um, has uh, a a legitimate reputation of being too often interested in like cracking, you know, cracking vertebrae. Uh, and it's not safe. And those, you know, extreme manipulations are generally, um, not warranted. And I have, um, I, you know, I, I, I did visit a chiropractor who turned out to be interested in those sorts of manipulations and you know, I didn't go back. Um, yeah, and you then, were messed up once. Was that uh, call? yeah. Um, and then I also found someone, um, Actually, this is up in Olympia, who was just absolutely terrific and, you know, really, really understood what the body was and used some combination of, you know, diagnostics with, with x-rays and also did a lot of traction um, if you're, you know, various parts of your spine. In my case, it was cervical spine, so sort of like neck traction, um, but also manipulations that were very gentle, no, you know, no sudden cracking movements that really responded to an understanding of all of the systems together. And I guess that is what any of these, any of these traditions that are either ancient or, you know, or newer, but are persistent and, um, and seem to produce results tend to be more holistic than reductionist. And, you know, holistic also has the sort of woo woo reputation, but, uh, the reductionist model of medicine has, yes, gotten us the successes of things like antibiotics and vaccines and surgeries. And it's also, uh, gotten us in part to a place where we have a very hard time getting diagnoses that are appropriate and, um, have a very hard time seeing people as, singular complex systems as opposed to a collection of parts and forgetting them out of emergence. So, um, it's a lot more to say about chiropractic. Um, with regard to acupuncture, um, I will just say this, um, that the, that the, the guy that I was sent to is actually, um, both trained in traditional, um, acupuncture in, I think, I think it's Taiwan if memory serves. And he also has an MD from Stanford. And his father has the same, and they themselves are ethnically um, Chinese, I believe, or, or Taiwanese. Uh, and that, you know, the fact that it, there's a lineage tradition there of both having the Western medical approach and the Chinese acupuncture approach, and having this, having this doctor say to me, you know, I can speak both languages. Uh, I don't practice Western medicine at this point, but I, you know, if, you know, you, me, you know, trained as a scientist, if you want to hear this in the language of science, I can do it that way. Or I can, you know, speak in the language of acupuncture. The fact is that, um, you know, they, they don't exactly translate into each other's languages, but there is now a robust, uh, peer-reviewed Western literature demonstrating the efficacy of acupuncture for some sorts of situations. You know, I'm sure it is used, and actually this Dr. Hong, who I've seen, um, has said, you know, you know, I talked to him about some other thing that I was experiencing. He said, yeah, I don't think that's what acupuncture will, I don't think acupuncture will do any good for that. So you, you, need, you need a practitioner who understands the limits of what they're doing, and also, if possible, who's capable of speaking across disciplines, and so, you know, is, is interested in and willing to put their work to the test of, for instance, science. Um, so I agree with a lot of what you said, but I also think it, you know, it misses the most important uh, aspect of this. Okay. Um, so what I would argue is that the central problem is that our Western scientific medical viewpoint is mechanistically based. And these alternative practices are 
Some of them are garbage. Those that are not garbage are metaphorical truths. And what that means is that there are patterns to be deduced about what therapies work. And the explanations that are delivered for why they work are non-literal. And that the problem is Western medicine has a particular reaction to that, which is that which is not literal is not true which is false. Mm -hmm. um, and that the problem is, that there, the reason that you say there's no translation is because there is no translation, yeah. there, nor should there be. So that is to say, um, you know, uh, acupuncture is based on the flow of something called chi through the body. Chi does not actually exist, but a model of chi allows a practitioner to actually alter what they do so that it is more effective at alleviating the, uh, the condition there is undoubtedly some mechanism under it that is that could be elucidated. And there's clinical evidence that for particular kinds of injuries, acupuncture is effective, uh, and more so than the pharmaceutical response of Western medicine in reducing pain. Right. And there's also the flip side, which mm -hmm. is that our Western mechanistic, it's only true if it's literal version of this, has plenty of garbage in it. Right. Sure. So the idea yeah. that um, the need for orthodontia in a large fraction of Western children is the result of bad genes having gotten into the system and therefore leaving people with unfortunately shaped jaws that need to have their teeth forcibly reorganized. That's just pure nonsense, as is the idea that chemical imbalances are, uh, you know, spreading through the population like wildfire, as is Nothing the idea... Nothing to be done for it, but treatment with neuroleptics and antidepressants. Right. It's people basically telling you they have the cure for something they're not particularly inclined to find the root cause of. Same thing for... Uh, the rampant need for glasses amongst young people. These are mm -hmm. all the result of evolutionary novelty, the subject of our book. Mm -hmm. And the point is, these novel influences result in our ill-prepared bodies malfunctioning and an ancient tradition that basically allows itself to attempt to cure that which it does not mechanistically understand, especially if it's a long-standing tradition, there is bound to be a lot of truth in it, even if that truth is not housed at the mechanistic level that science can easily recognize it. But when you begin to understand how much we clearly have wrong in the Western, you know, pointy-headed scientific way of doing this, and how much is apparently right in these metaphorical traditions that are longstanding and have delivered an awful lot of, uh, of therapy, the answer is, well, yeah, questioner, you're... You're missing something. What you're missing is that a metaphorical tradition may be able to alleviate your pain for reasons that none of us can mechanistically explain, and that doesn't mean it's not alleviated or that it was, you know, all in your head or anything like it. Right. There can be um, empirical results, even absent a theoretical explanation for why they work. Right. Literally false, metaphorically true, is good enough if it uh, allows you to function in ways that you couldn't before. And so anyway, I hope that one day we see some kind of an enlightened uh, approach to medicine in which we begin to honor just simply the understanding the clinicians used to have about cause and effect that didn't, you know, it was great if you had the mechanism, but let's face it, medicine was born uh, long before we had the ability to peer into all of these systems in detail. It was gross anatomy and nothing below that level. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, noticing patterns uh, is good enough to get you to therapies that work. Ancient traditions are liable to have a lot of truth in them if they're expensive. And um, anyway, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with recognizing that. Yeah.